everyone, this is Ms. Segovia and I'm going to walk you through your notes on classification. Now I'd like you to put classification in the page that's opposite your butterflies. So butterflies are going to end up on the left over here and then classification notes on the right. So let's go ahead and set up for uh, Cornell notes. Draw your line down the side. Bring this one pretty far down um, and just keep your summary short and sweet because we got a lot of notes that we're going to do in this one. So classification, or actually let's start out with our question first. What is taxonomy? So classification is actually the way that scientists organize organisms based upon many different factors. And all this started way, way long ago in the 1730s. Hard to think that people were thinking about this way back then. So there was a guy whose no, name is Carolus, like Carol, but oh, with the us, Linnaeus. Carolus Linnaeus was a Swedish scientist. And in fact, he was a botanist. And a botanist is somebody who studies plants, botanist. And he developed a two-word system, which we now call binomial nomenclature. And you remember, this is a long time ago. They like to talk fancy with big words. So binomial nomenclature. And in this, the first part of a name is the genus. And the second part is referring to the species. Whenever you see these, when we write them, we usually write the first one capitalized and the second one lower, lower case. So for humans, we are Homo sapiens. With uh, cats, they are Felis Catus. And so always capitalize the first one, lowercase the second one. So Linnaeus, kind of a cool guy here. He was, must have been really OCD back in the day and loved to organize. So he also went beyond this with just, instead of just two names, he developed a classification system. which included, this is a lot, seven hierarchical and we call them taxa, taxonomy. So it's a way of organizing. And so this one is pretty big. And so um, what's kind of nice about it, because it's hierarchical, I know it's a crazy sounding word, but that means um, it's kind of like inclusive. Like if you were to do kind of like Venn diagram sort of things, you'd have like a big, like a huge circle and then a circle within that and then a circle within that and then a circle within that. So your biggest, largest circle is kingdom. And so let's, let's go ahead and work the, the cat, our Felis catus. They are in the kingdom Animalia. They are in the phylum Chordata. Class Mammalia. Order 
carnivora. Family. Felidae. Genus Felis and Species Caddis. So one of the things we do expect you guys to know is Kingdom Phylum Class Order Family Genus Species. And so there's lots of fun ways to remember that. Probably the safest one is King Philip Cried Oh for Goodness Sakes. Um, and you can ask your teachers, they probably have a few other ones that might um, be a little bit funner or <laughs> a little bit more interesting. And so uh, this is the long name for a cat. So they are animals, chordata means they have a spinal cord. Uh, they are mammals, which means they produce milk for their young. Carnivores, they eat meat. And then we have philidae felis catus. And so that's kind of taking us into the big cat family. So like if it was a lion, you would still have Felidae, um, but the genus and species names might be a little bit different. If you ever are asked to determine which organisms are most closely related, um, what you usually look for is the genus name or anything above that. Um, but species is usually unique to that particular species. And we'll do some lessons in class on this one too. Um, so this is our, you know, you know what's, what is the long name for a cat? Animalia cordata mammalia carnivora felidae felis catus. Okay, so sometimes dichotomous. Keys are used to identify organisms by traits that are visible. However, scientists today, so nowadays, look more closely closely, there we go. at how members of groups are related. So one of the big things they'll use too to look at things is genetics. And so we could see like, seriously, like looking at the proteins, how closely they are. And if you remember back from a previous unit, uh, you had like molecular homology. We can actually see in their DNA how closely they are. But dichotomous keys are what you were working on here with the butterflies. And so on this one, when you're looking at butterflies, you looked at their physical traits and characteristics and colors. And so, you know, does it have spots or not have spots? Does it have a banding pattern or a speckled or checkered pattern? And so we do still use this a little bit for doing just kind of to identify stuff. But nowadays we can also like know, we could pull the genetics of these two and see like if they're like how closely related they are. So it's kind of a cool thing that we've actually come a very, very long way in determining if things are related. And even this stuff up here changes. Um, scientists will you know, find a, a new protein or something that says, hey, wait a minute, that's not the right family. It actually belongs to a different one. And they'll go back and edit it. So um, sometimes you'll see a, a big deal that they've now, you know, change the species uh, classification or something based upon genetic evidence, so kind of cool. But um, when we're going and we're organizing things, one of the things that we look at is phylogeny. You're getting a lot of cool, new, crazy sounding words in this unit, aren't you? So the study of how 
living and extinct organisms are related to one another. And so in that last unit, I asked you guys to like draw a phylogenetic tree. Uh, we'll do an example down here in a second. We also look at something, and here let's underline that's a big deal, uh, called a clade. You'll hear it sometimes as cladistics. Is a group of species that includes a single common ancestor and all descendants of that ancestor. And so, oh my gosh, I'm sorry I had it zoomed in, guys. Here, you can pause it and copy it. My bad. Um, and so, um, kind of like your family tree. If you go back to your great-great-grandparents and then all the, the um, family that comes off of that. So, um, when we want to draw a clade, um, we can show the... Um, sorry, uh, when we, when we want to show a clade, we can draw a cladogram. And so a clade is a group of species that includes a single common ancestor and all descendants of the ancestor um, can be shown using a cladogram. And so uh, let's draw a little cladogram here. And so you might have kind of the original common ancestor and then get a branching off of descendants. So you might have a line that goes up this way and then they they branched over here. Um, but as um, they developed over time there might have been some other branches going on too and some little changes and modifications that happened to those creatures over time. And so you could have species A, species B, C, and D with um, right here being the common ancestor. And then you have at these little nodes right here, we usually refer to them as splitting events. So something happened, um, a mutation that ended up being uh, some sort of advantage to that creature in whichever uh, habitat it happened to be in, uh, that caused a little bit of differentiation to happen. We would have referred to all these guys up here as descendants of that common ancestor. And so if you want to look at how closely they're related, uh, you look at how closely they split off. So in this particular tree, C and D are most closely related, whereas a and D are least related because they're further apart. They're, where they meet up is way back towards the common ancestor um, and as we get closer and closer we get the closer relationships. In fact um, when we study these relationships what we look at are called derived characters. And so derived characters are traits that arose in the most recent common ancestor of a particular lineage and passed to descendants. And so um, this could be a trait like a fur color or something like that 
that um, happened here at this splitting event, and now um, answer, or our current species D gets to uh, have that in its population. And so uh, if we look way back, you may or may not see that in A and B, um, but it's something that arose as a result of a mutation in that particular one. And so it derived, means it came from that ancestor. And so that was where it originated. So um, these are your notes for classification. We're going to be doing lots of little um, mini labs and fun stuff in class to help you understand it. But uh, what I like about it is for the most part, it's pretty common sense. And I hope you find it that way too. If you don't, please come see your teacher. We'll be happy to help. Thanks.